study the uh, when we study functions what we really are studying is the behavior of the functions and there's there's certain things that occur that we also find of interest one of the things that we find of interest is boundedness is there a limitation on the y values is there a limitation on the range right boundedness is it, we could solve it algebraically but usually it's easier to kind of figure it out or at least look at the graph graphically you could determine it is there a restriction on the y value here is it bounded from above I guess is what I'm saying no because this thing looks like it's approaching positive infinity in the y direction is it bounded from below no because it looks like it's going on forever to towards negative infinity in the y direction right so when we talk about boundedness what we're talking about are the y values is there a limit to the is there a, is there a maximum y value and or is there a minimum y value so let's look at this next one this next one right here there's no limit to the y value there's no maximum y value I cannot say the maximum y value is 10,000 because really y could be 10,001 it could also be 10,002 and so y as you look from above approaches positive infinity but as you look from below looky here that is the lowest y value this graph will have here's another low value which is a minimum a relative minimum but here this is the absolute lowest y value is so if I were to assign a number right here at this point at the vertex of this little dip here that would be the lowest y value I would not have a y, a y value lower than that so we would say that this particular function is not bounded from above but definitely bounded from below there's a boundary on the y value from below okay so now if we move on to this next function similar thing bounded from above at this maximum and at this maximum I can't go any higher there isn't a y value higher than those two little bumps in the curve there isn't one so it's bounded from above but if you look the graph is not bounded from below now if it's bounded from above and from below as you see in this final one we just say that it's bounded bounded from above and bounded from below now what what advantage would that have well if I can define a function as bounded that means that it will do what it will both increase and decrease right well all the functions have that opportunity but I I, I can I can I can determine the increasing and decreasing based on the boundedness right I know this function right here is the maximum value and this is the maximum value and we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more as to why these functions are bounded from above and below but basically there's some it's not an accident there's a reason they're bounded from above and bounded from below and if we study that behavior it's useful to us okay so when we look at it uh, th were there any questions about that so this is the formal definition and, it, and I'll just read it to you real quick this is based on the graphs that we just looked at okay so a function is bounded from below if there is some number b that is less than or equal to every number in the range of s or f any such number b is called a lower bound of the function let me read that again a function f is bounded below if there is some number b that is less than or equal to every number in the range that's the minimum value b everything else is higher than that everything else is greater than that so we say that b is the lower bound of f likewise a function f is bounded from above or bounded above if there is such a number b capital b that is greater than or equal to every number in the range of f any such number b is called the upper bound of f it's the maximum y value for f then we say that the function f is bounded if it is bounded from above and bounded from below 